Hey everybody, I'm Jared Erdody, owner of Next Buck Outdoors, and I wanted to take a minute to uh, go over something that's it's always been kind of close to my heart as a taxidermist. You know, we go into hunting season this time of year, all looking to get that trophy buck, and I see a lot of advice out there about caping bucks, uh, caping your deer out for a head mount, a shoulder mount, and I see a lot of bad advice out there. So what I wanted to do is give a hopefully a really clear demonstration on the cuts that you want to make if you're looking to get your buck mounted this fall. In this day and age there's a lot of different forms out there for taxidermy and many of them have a really full shoulder so in many cases people talk about going between the legs and that's really not what you want to do because the forms nowadays have a, a real full shoulder or it certainly at least gives you the option. So what you want to do is go well behind the shoulder. So the guideline, guideline I use when I'm doing uh, my cuts is the sternum. If you gut up to the sternum, that's as far as you need to cut. You don't need to split the rib cage all the way up to get the, the chest you know, contents, the heart and lungs out of there. You can reach up and cut the esophagus. Um, so what you want to do is cut completely around the body here and then and, and then uh, what you see here, I've cut the, the legs off of this doe, and you can do the same thing with a buck because you've got plenty of, of skin below the, uh, from the knuckles, you know, from the knees up. So consider these cuts optional. If, you're, if you make this cut and you cut the legs off, you really can get the skin off without even making cuts up the back of the legs. And that's even better in my opinion. If you are going to make cuts on the legs, what you want to do is go on the back side of the leg here, okay? So you follow this knuckle from the, from the back of the knee right up this line. And, and you'll see on, on whitetails, you've got a transition from basically white belly hair and the inside of the legs um, to the brown hair of the body. Follow that line right up and meet the, the cut around the center. And that's really all you have to do. Then you skin it down. Okay. What you want to avoid is doing this sort of thing where you go and make your cuts in between the legs and come across and come around there, or worse yet, you know, come up the front legs and and around the front of the chest, unless you want a neck mount. Um, what I see a lot also is uh, guys will cut real short in here they'll cut around the the legs too high and again a lot of today's taxidermy forms have a real full shoulder and they show more of the the lower part of the upper part of that front leg and if you cut it off short here you're losing some of the skin here and you're not going to be able to show it in the mount so you're going to decrease your options your best bet is to come from the kneecap up make the slit up the back of the leg and, and you'll be set now as far as the cut on the back, um, the traditional method has always been cut it all the way up, you know, a dorsal incision and from the, you know, between the ears all the way back to the, the cut around the body. Um, again, my opinion and as a taxidermist, the fewer incisions, the better your result. So what I do, a lot of taxidermists do now, is a short incision and it allows you to get enough clearance to get the uh, cape over the neck and the skull and, and do the rest of your skinning job. Now the other traditional cut, if you're, if you're so inclined to actually cape the, fit, you know, the, the skin off the face and the skull, is a Y incision. And, and I don't like that one either because it's, it's harder to get to as a taxidermist. You've got more sewing with a Y incision because the angle on antlers, you know, they, they typically slant back and there's a sharp angle between the skull and the base of that pedicle. So it's harder to get your sewing done and you've got more sewing to do. So you tend to take bigger stitches just to get through it and it's harder to hide that incision. So what I will do is I'll do a short T incision from the middle of the pedicles and I just connect those, okay? So now you've got, and, and this is kind of exaggerated on this doe, because if you have a big, you know, big set of bases on a buck, your incision's probably only going to be about two inches, maybe two and a half. 
Um, so you make an incision right between the antlers and then connect that one with a, a short incision. Depending on the size of the neck on that buck, you're going to want to um, go back you know, as far as you have to to be able to slip the skin over the neck. Okay? So keep these cuts in mind this fall. When you get that next buck and you're ready for another mount on your wall, your taxidermist will thank you for knowing how to keep your deer properly.